Hi, in this tutorial, we are gonna go a couple of code, uh, line codes to process uh, raw data from a tensile frame and plot this data in MATLAB uh, to extract the stress strain curve. As you see here, you can extract the engineering or also calculate the true stress strain curve. And additionally, we can also uh, obtain basic data from the tensile uh, experiment, such as a yield stress, ultimate tensile strain, elongation, and um, reduction of area. So now we are in the MATLAB uh, platform, MATLAB software, and uh, we need to copy all of these code uh, um, programs and functions in the current MATLAB folder. So all of them are going to be utilized to run this um, program to calculate the stress strain curve. But mainly the tensile data, ten tensile lab dot m is the main code where we are going to call all of the functions. So this is the main code and the other are sub functions that are, go are going to be called uh, during the program. First thing that we need to do is import the data and there is many ways to import the data to MATLAB. I'm going to go to the basic manual way. So first um, we can go to the folder where you have the raw data. In this case, it's data extracted from an MTS a tensile frame. So we have the specimen dot that, which is the a file that contains all of the data. I'm going to just control, uh, right click and um, paste in my current folder. So it's here, a specimen. And I can right click and uh, open outside MATLAB just to check the file. So in this case, sorry, I'm opening outside MATLAB. And you could see basically the raw data here. So we have uh, time, <clears throat> displacement of the machine. And third column is the force in Newtons. And the final column is the laser extensometer that we use during the test. So this is the laser extensometer in millimeters, force, displacement of the machine, and time. For the tensile, uh, tensile uh, stress strain curve, we are going to utilize the displacement of the extensometer, which is the fourth column, and the force, which is the third column. That's something that we need to <clears throat> figure out. But first, we need to import this data. So I'm going to close. And again, right click. And in, this time, I'm going to uh, click import data. So when I import data, it's another window is going to pop out. And there's basically, it's a um, importing um, help from MATLAB. So basically, you'll see here all of the data in MATLAB uh, atmosphere. They should import pretty uh, basically directly. And you just select the data that you want to import. In this case, we want to select all of the numerical data, none of the text data, obviously, and you'll see all, everything is numerical. And basically, there is w different ways to output the, the bar this variable. In this case, I can use table, but I'm going to use numerical matrix because all of our data is numerical and make it our calculation easier. Additionally, I can place a name here in when they said specimen. I can double click and I can assign a name, for example, lab 01. Okay. So I click enter and now can import the data. So you're going to see as soon as I import the data, basically uh, in the workspace, this uh, matrix is going to um, uh, appear here. So now if I, I can close this window and if I can and double click in this uh, variable, you'll see the imported data that we imported from the text file, the raw file. So we have time displacement, force in newtons, and uh, extensometer in millimeters. So those are the data that we are going to use. So now we have our data called lab01 on MATLAB, uh, imported in MATLAB. So we can run now our program called tensile data, tensile lab, sorry. So when we double click there, the first section is basically the inputs that we need to place. It's in manual way. So the first uh, line basically is the name of the variable that we are going to run, which is case is lab01, which is the same name here. And we need to specify where is the force and in which column is the force and in which column is the displacement. In this case, I'm saying the column three contains the force, uh, uh, column four, the displacement. And I leave this open because in some uh, machines, uh, and depending on the configuration of the machine, uh, the column can change. Sometimes the force is in the last column, could be column four. Sometimes you have an extra column, so you have five columns. So basically displacement is the column two and force in, the, in column five. So you can just modify it accordingly. You just need to check, again, coming here, 
open outside and check where your variables are. So in this case, column three fours, column four displacement, that's what I am assigning here. Now the extra stuff is uh, experimental data that you need to measure manually, basically using calipers or another any other uh, LA measurement uh, system. So we have, in this case, we are running tensile tests for flat specimens. So we have the width and thickness of the specimen and the initial length that we mark between two uh, marks in the gauge area. And again, we have the final thickness, the final width and the final length to calculate the elongation and reduction of area. So those are the basic inputs that we need to place. And I can run this uh, program directly here clicking the run, but I'm gonna go by section. So as you see, basically this, this program is divided by sections. So I'm gonna go by the first section, just run the first section. And the first section basically is not gonna do anything special. It's just gonna calculate all of these parameters and enter all of these parameters in the workspace or so nothing crazy there. The second is gonna start to do some calculations and also some uh, filtering if necessary uh, and started to save some data in its particular variables. And also have here hidden um, uh, plot the force displacement curve if I want. So I can just uh, undo this first line here. And now this is available, this figure here. So if I have this available here, I can run this and it's gonna plot the displacement force directly from the raw data. So if I click here, you'll see it's creating a, a figure 10, the force displacement data. But sometimes, you know, um, I don't want to see this when I want just to process this. So in this case, I just uh, comment this uh, section here. So it's not gonna um, run this code. So when I run this section, basically it's creating all of the variables, but not uh, plotting the figure. So I'm gonna skip that, but you can also have that option. Now in the following section, basically we are gonna start with some calculations. Uh, basic calculations like area, elongation, reduction of area, based in the experimental data that we place in the input. And also we are going to start to calculate some strain and stress ba basically based in the experimental data that we imported. So we have the displacement versus the elongation. We have this, the engineering strain and the force versus area. We have the engineering stress in this case. We need to um, uh, have our uh, units accordingly. So in this case, the displacement doesn't have any units because we have millimeters over millimeters and the force is going to be newtons over millimeter square, which is the area. So in this case, we have megapascals. In this case, the stress is going to be in megapascals because we are newtons over millimeter square. Now, I also create, usually what I create is a, a, a vector file uh, of strains just to make sure that our strain is symmetrically uh, plot symmetrically plot. So I created a strain a vector of strains. And basically, based in the experimental data that we have, I interpolate the stress. So I have a stress strain consistent vector. So that's what I'm doing in this area. And I also have some filters. If sometimes the data is too noisy, depending on the machine that you are using and depending on the strain rate that you are using. So you can uh, use in the filters like medium filter and smooth filter if necessary. In this case, they are common, so they are not running those. They are not uh, actually applying anything in our current uh, configuration, but you can uncomment them and you can apply the filter. So you can just check if the, you need to put some filter or not. In this case, I'm just going to comment, so we are not going to use any filter in the data. So I'm gonna I'm gonna run this section. So basically, what it does is just make some more calculations. It doesn't show anything yet. Now the next section of the code is gonna start something um, interesting, which is the is calculating the yield stress. In this case, we are gonna use a concept of a 0 0.4, 0 0.2 offset yield stress, which basically is recommended by the ASTM E8 standard. Uh, in this case, for calculating the yield stress, I'm calling another function called function yield uh, two, which is this function that you'll see and you need to also copy in the folder. So if I double click this function, basically it's a you know extra function that I'm calling. And what I'm doing is plotting uh, uh, the stress strain curve in a, in a different figure. And I'm gonna give to the user the option to choose two points in the in the elastic range. Basically, we are gonna choose manually two points in the elastic way, and we'll see that in a minute. 
And basing those two points that we selected, it's going to calculate a linear interpolation. So this is going to call another function called linear interpolation, which is here. So it's going to do a linear, a basic linear interpolation. So we have the, you know, the, the intercept and the slope of the linear interpolation. And based on that, I'm going to offset that line 0 0.002 or 0.2%. In some cases, you need to offset, let's say, 0.5%. So you can just change this one to 0.5%. Or if you be more aggressive, you can say, I'm going to uh, uh, offset 0.1%. Uh, so in this case, 0.1%, right? But I mean, the idea is to uh, leave it that and 0 0.002, which is 0.2%, which is the recommended by the ASTM standard. So basically, it's creating that. And based on that, is uh, obtaining automatically the yield stress in the material. So uh, this is the function. Uh, it's just I'm just, just showing you the function. So we are not going to run directly that. Basically, this function is uh, called in our code. So we are in this section. So I'm going to run this section, and you'll see how that function is called and what we need to do. So now I'm in this section, running the section. So basically, the first thing that it does is creating a new figure, 25, and basically showing me a part of the stress strain curve, like the initial part. So you'll see the elastic behavior and after that, the plasticity. So it, basically, the data is a little noisy there, but you know what we're going to try to do is select the two points. And based on these two points, it's going to do a linear interpolation. And after that, it's going to offset 0 0.02. And based on that, it's going to calculate the yield stress automatically. So let's select two points. So basically, with my mouse, I just come in here and select it, for example, in the line side, one point here, and click Enter. And a second point is going to be also in the line. Make sure that you are not including the the change of slope because that's going to change the the, the, the the interpolation. So let's select that in the straight line there and enter. So basically, it automatically, that's all of the calculations. So basically, it's calculating the yield stress automatically. That should be popped here in the screen, uh, yield stress, right? So it's basically calculating the yield stress and calculating another data that are, you, know, you can go and uh, check here. Finally, I have another line of code, which is basically clearing the true stress through a strain curve. So basically, this is based in the logarithmic. So uh, the, the true strain is basically in the logarithmic of one plus the, the engineering strain. And the true stress is also a function of the engineering stress and engineering strain. So basically, those are the main functions that we have. And in this case, in this line of, in this section, I'm plotting the data. So let's see and run this section. So now we have two plots. The first plot in, uh, indicates the engineering stress strain curve in solid line and the true stress strain curve in the segmented line. Now, you'll notice that the true stress strain curve go to the, up to the maximum point of the engineering curve. And it, that's why, because um, the engineering, the true stress or this equation that we are using are only valid up to the maximum point of the engineering curve. Because after this point, the material start to yield and start to neck. And these equations, these logarithmic equations that we use for the calculating the true stress through a strain curve are not valid anymore. That's why we should just plot the uh, true stress up to the point of maximum strain, maximum uh, ultimate stress. Okay, so that's why the, while the, the the ultimate, uh, the, the uh, true stress, true strain curve are going to up to the maximum point. And the figure three is not more than the plastic strain. So basically you'll see this same curve that you'll see here, but uh, basically I just, here you'll see the whole curve elastic and plastic. Here I'm just chopping uh, the elastic part and uh, normalizing to zero. So here it's starting the plastic engineer the strain curve. Sometimes this is important for uh, modeling purposes. So you just you don't want the elastic part, for example, for a Johnson Cook model. So you just want just the plastic side. So in this case, you just you know uh, use that part. So that's basically uh, the final part. And I also have an extra line of code that if you want to utilize, basically this is calculating the um, the. Um, First, is calling another sub, sub function, which is calc n, which is calculating the exponent and the coefficient. And that's basically to calculate the uh, uh, power law equation where you want to um, model your experimental data using a power law, 
Remember that the power law is no more than K uh, uh, multiplied by the strain of the power of N. So that's the power law that usually you use for modeling. So you here you express like the, yeah, this is the question that I'm mentioning. And uh, basically automatically based in the ASTM standard is calculating the, uh, the K and N parameter. So I can just run this one as well. It's automatically done. And for this case, uh, basically the standard was, uh, uh, was suggest is try to avoid the final part when the material start to uh, neck. So basically I also give uh, the, here the option to the user to select some points in the plastic regime. Notice that this is in logarithmic scale where the, the, the data is linear. So basically I can select a point here and a point here. So it's calculating the uh, that uh, equation based in those points that I select. The final uh, section is just running to delete all of the data that I'm not using anymore. So if I run it, this is going to clean my workspace and just leaving the useful data. So in this case, we have the elongation that we calculated based in the experimental data. This is the elongation based, based in the extensometer. So the extensometer is also calculating an elongation. So we have two elongations. This is the one that we measure manually. This is from the elongation. We have K and N, which are the parameters from the power law that we calculated automatically. Um, we have the reduction of area based in the calculation, in this case, 0.4 or 40%. Uh, the ultimate tensile strength, which is uh, 1,200 or 13, uh, all, uh, all, approximately 1300 megapascals, the yield stress, which is approximately 1000 megapascals, and the yield strain. Now, if we move to our figure here, figure two, you'll notice that uh, the maximum strain is approximately 1300, which is the value that uh, I uh, am mentioning here, the maximum yield stress. And the uh, ultimate uh, Tensile strength is going to be also here. Uh, the, sorry, the yield stress is going to be uh, close to 1000, which is basically based in the uh, offset. Now you can come to, you know, a uh, pros browser and uh, editor and just if you want to make your plot uh, much uh, better for a paper or for a report, you can just come here and manually edit if you want to. So you can uh, select the right axis, you know, put some names in your axis, uh, select some variables there. So make it your the plot more fancy and put some legends here. So for example, again, this is the stress in megapascals and <clears throat> this is the strain, not units in this case. So we have a nice plot to be placed in a report or in a paper. So that's basically all the, the tutorial that I have this time. So in this basically <clears throat> short video, we what we see is how to process experimental data in MATLAB to produce a stress strain curve. Uh, and in that case, obtain uh, basic data, including the 0.2 offset yield stress. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, contact me. Uh, if you need the code, also let me know and I can send you a version of this code that I just show you in this video. 